Hi, uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the energy state of soil water, and this is a part of our course on groundwater hydrology. Okay, so in the previous chapter, we discussed about soil water content and some methods that can be used to measure the soil water content. But the point here is that uh, knowing only uh, the uh, soil water content is not enough to describe the water status in soil. For example, consider the sandy media and clay media and assume they have the same amount of water content. Let's say, I don't know, 15%. If you put these two layers next to each other, you will have a flow of water from one side to the other side, okay? So that suggests, although the water content was the same, but something else was different in the water air residing in these two media, causing the flow from one side to the other side. Okay, so like all matters, water as well in soil contains various amounts and forms of energy. And the most commonly considered energies for hydrological applications are the kinetic energy and potential energy. Okay, since water moves quite a slow, very slowly actually in soil and in aquifer, etc., the kinetic energy usual, is usually negligible compared to the potential energy, which is the case in our course. Okay, and, and in this case, when you only consider the potential energy, the deriving force for flow is a potential gradient. Okay. And, and that which causes the flow. So as I already mentioned, like all other forms of matter, water flows from locations with higher potential energy to locations of lower potential energy. So here, for example, this is your point one, this is your point two, okay? And here the potential energy is equal to psi one, here is equal to psi two. Psi, uh, I use psi to present the potential energy, and then you will have a flow of the energy from the flow of the matters basically, um, or in this case water, water flows from places with higher energy to the lower energy that an I, that is the gradient is equal to minus psi two, minus psi one divided by x2 minus x1. So x2 minus x1 is a positive value, okay? But psi two minus psi one is a negative value because psi two is less than psi one. Therefore, I add this minus sign here to get a positive value. So the i, the gradient is equal to minus gradient uh, psi. Uh, gradient of psi, okay? So water in soil is subjected to several forces and the combined effect of these forces is what define the energy state of the uh, water, okay? Which we will discuss in this uh, video, okay? So here I'm going to give you a few uh, definition. That is first the total soil water potential that is expressed as the sum of the following key components that is psi z plus psi m plus psi p plus psi s. So psi z, psi t actually is the uh, total soil water potential. Psi z is the gravitational head or gravitational potential. Psi m is the matric potential. Psi p is the pressure potential. And psi s is the solute or, or this should be or, sorry, uh, or solid or osmotic potential, okay? So I will explain for you uh, in a few minutes uh, what does uh, each of these uh, terms uh, mean. Uh, uh, so, but right now I'm just giving you the definition. So that is the soil. The total soil water potential has four components, and the four components include these four. Uh, it basically includes gravitational potential, magnetic potential, pressure potential, and solid or osmotic potential. So if you ignore the gravitational potential, if you ignore psi z, the summation of the remaining terms is called soil water potential that is psi w and presented by psi w equal to psi m that's matric potential plus pressure potential plus psi uh, s that is the uh, osmotic potential okay also there is one more definition here an important one that is hydraulic potential in some hydrologic applications you can ignore the osmotic potential that means let me delete this one here uh, sorry uh, so if you ignore the psi s, that is the osmotic potential, the summation of the remaining terms, that is psi z plus psi m plus psi p, is equal to, or is named uh, hydraulic potential, and that is presented by psi h. Okay, so these are the definition, uh, the couple of definition regarding soil water potential, and I'm going to explain for you, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, the, the meaning of each component. But I want to highlight here that this is, a, uh, I'm going to provide a very, 
very basic uh, and introductory uh, level of the, uh, the discussion uh, on the on the soil water potential. And, uh, and I think that uh, will do the job for our bachelor level course on groundwater hydrology. Otherwise, one could talk much, much more with much, much more detail about this um, soil water potential and, and, and each component, especially Psi-M, matic potential and Psi-S, that is the osmotic potential. Uh, but uh, for the but 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 uh, this will be beyond the scope of this uh, course. So I'm going to today just explain some uh, basic uh, definition, uh, provide you with basic definition about each component. Okay. But here I only have one slide. I'm going to show talk a little bit about the unit of the potential energy, and then we will uh, uh, look into the definition of each component of the uh, total um, soil water potential, and uh, and that is. Uh, um, so, so the potential energy of water can be expressed in terms of chemical potential represented by mu, water potential represented by psi, or water head represented by uh, h. Okay, and then they have their own dimension, they have their own unit. Uh, and, and the good news here here is that we have a simple equation that is mu is equal to psi divided by rho w, that is the chemical potential equal to psi, that is the water potential divided by density of water rho w equal to g that is acceleration of gravity times h, that is the, um, the water head. Okay, so you can easily switch from one expression to another one. For example, if the pressure potential, uh, if, uh, sorry, if the water potential is expressed in the unit of, uh, is expressed in, in water head, h, you just simply multiply that by the acceleration of gravity, you get the expression, you, you get the, you get the uh, potential energy expressed in chemical potential mu. Or, for example, you can multiply H by G and the density of the water to have the potential energy expressed in water potential with the unit of Newton per square meter or Pascal. Okay, so with this equation, you can simply uh, switch from uh, basically one unit to the other one. Okay, and uh, so. Now let's look into each component of the total soil water potential. Uh, the first one, uh, probably the most, uh, the, the, the simplest one is psi z, that is the gravitational head. And I think most of you already know uh, what is gravitational head, probably from um, physics. Um, that is to raise a body, work has to be done. And this work is stored by the raised body in the form of gravitational potential energy. Okay, uh, so, uh, and if the potential energy is expressed in the uh, in, in water head, which is the case, which is the case in most uh, which uh, in most cases in this course we uh, use uh, water head. Look at this table again. Water head that is expressed in the uh, with dimension of length and uh, in SI unit expressed in, in meter. Um, so when the gravitational head expressed in water head, the value of gravitational head is simply equal to the vertical distance between the point of interest, for example, here, uh, and the reference level. Let's say here, I assume this is my reference level. So this vertical distance between this uh, uh, reference level and the point of interest. Uh, will give me the gravitational head when expressed uh, in water head. Okay, so that is the gravitational head. The second one is the pressure potential, psi p, uh, which is essentially the hydrostatic pressure exerted by water saturating soil above a point of interest. Okay, so basically, um, I, I, so here, for example, this is your water table. If this is your point of interest, the vertical distance between the point of interest and the water table here, that gives you the uh, pressure uh, potential when expressed in the in, in water head. Okay, so when expressed as energy per unit weight, so energy per unit weight is water head. Look at this table here, energy per unit weight is equal to water head, right? So uh, when expressed as energy per unit weight, it is equal to the vertical distance from the point of interest that is here to the free water surface or water table depths. Sorry, well, water table elevation, not depths. Okay, so that is the uh, pressure potential. Note that uh, the pressure potential at the water table and above the water table, when you are dealing with unsaturated zone, it's equal to zero. And under the water table, the pressure potential is a positive value. Okay, so 
The third uh, component here, the third component of the total soil water potential is matrix potential, which is uh, because of the uh, capillarity concepts in porous media, okay, psi m. And, and I like this definition of matrix potential. Let me uh, read it here. That is, matrix potential is defined as the negative pressure, is defined as the negative pressure to which a solution identical in composition with the solution in soil must be subjected in order to be in equilibrium through a porous membrane wall with the solution in porous media. So what does it mean? Okay, so let's say this is a membrane and on this side of the membrane you have porous media where the pressure is negative, you have, that means it is unsaturated zone. Okay, you have a little bit water here, a little bit water here, a little bit water here. So it's an unsaturated zone. So therefore the pressure is negative. And assume you have water on this side or basically the solution that has a similar, the, uh, uh, identical composition as the solution in the porous material. So let's assume you have water in both cases. Okay, since here the water uh, is under negative pressure, you will have a water flow from this uh, solution or from water to the uh, porous material through this membrane, okay? But if you apply negative pressure or suction on this water, you can uh, stop this flow, okay? Or to establish the equilibrium. So the pressure that you, you need to apply to establish equilibrium the between each side of this membrane, that pressure is equal to the matrix potential, okay? And uh, matrix potential, actually several factors influence the value of the matrix potential, things such as contact angle, wettability, surface tension, pore size, curved interfaces, etc. As I already mentioned, discussing about every detail, uh, all these factors and the details of these factors is uh, really beyond the scope of this course. And not only that, but also there are still open questions that from fundamental point of view, uh, from physical point of view, how the matrix potential in soil is uh, modified, is, uh, changes as a function of different parameters. You can basically do your PhD or even postdoc on, on, on such topics. But here I am going to stick just to with this uh, definition that uh, I already explained about the concept of the matrix potential. Okay, I have one slide here just to show you how normally matrix potential is measured in the field that is done by a device called tensiometer. And a tensiometer consists of a porous cup. So this is a tensiometer. At the bottom, you have a porous cup here. This is, you see here, this is the porous area. Okay, this is the porous area. Uh, so um, a tensiometer consists of a porous cup, usually made of ceramic, having very fine pores. Okay, that is connected to a vacuum gauge here. Okay, through a water-filled tube. And that is your tube that is filled with water. So here you have water. This is the porous cup here, which is ceramic. And, uh, and so if the potential, in the surrounding soil is lower than the atmospheric pressure. So here, so this is the surrounding soil. Uh, this is unsaturated soil. Since it's unsaturated, therefore the pressure is negative. So if the potential in the surrounding soil is lower than atmospheric pressure, water will flow from the tensiometer through the poroscope. Since it is por por since it is porous, you have water flow through this poroscope uh, to this unsaturated zone. Okay. And this mass flow from the tensiometer to the soil lowers the pressure in the tensiometer, okay? And, and uh, which creates suction. And that suction is, is sensed by this gauge, okay? And then you can convert this reading from gauge to the matrix potential, okay? So note that the value of the matrix potential ranges from zero when the soil is saturated to uh, very uh, low negative numbers when you're dealing with a relatively uh, dry soil, okay? So let me here highlight once again that the, for, the, for the pressure potential uh, at the water table and above the water table, psi p is equal to zero. And under the water table, the psi p is a positive value, okay? But for matrix potential, uh, through the saturated zone, the matrix potential is equal to zero, okay? Uh, and through the unsaturated zone, above the, the, above the water table, um, uh, it, is, uh, it is equal to a negative value, okay? Note that at the water table, pressure is equal to zero. So both the matrix potential and psi p, both of them are zero at the water table, but below the water table, psi p is positive, 
above the water table is equal to zero. Uh, and for psi m, the matrix potential below the water table, it is zero. And above the water table, it is a negative value. Okay? So that is about matrix potential and how to measure that. And I have one more slide that is about the, the solid or uh, osmotic potential. So we had psi p, that is the total soil water potential is equal to psi z, which we discussed, psi m, which we discussed, psi p, which we discussed. And the last point is the psi s, that is the solid or osmotic potential, which is because of the presence of solute in soil, okay, which affects the thermodynamic properties, the, the thermodynamic properties of water and lowers its potential energy and its vapor pressure, okay? The osmotic effect is important in the interaction between plant roots and soil, as well as processes involving vapor diffusion, okay? And the solid potential, also called osmotic potential, is proportional to the concentration, solid concentration and temperature, according to the Van, uh, Van Hoff relationship, that is psi S, it is the osmotic uh, potential equal to or, or, osmotic pressure or, or solid potential equal to minus RTCS and R is the universal gas constant which is equal to this when expressing this unit T is the, the absolute temperature in Kelvin and CS is the solute concentration expressed in mole per cubic meter so if you use these units then the psi S will be in the unit of uh, kilopascal okay and and uh, that is a basic that basically concludes our uh, lecture on the energy state of soil uh, so, uh, of soil water as i already mentioned a few times that was a this was a very basic and introductory introductory uh, level uh, regarding the definition and concept uh, of of soil water uh, uh, potential soil water uh, pot poten uh, soil, soil water potential uh, which will do, which will do the job for our uh, groundwater hydrology for our bachelor level groundwater hydrology course but uh, for the ones who are interested to learn more about uh, different aspects of the uh, soil water potential especially matric potential osmotic potential there are so many resources available that uh, you can uh, use uh, I hope um, you found this video helpful thank you